Hello, hello to the Facebook universe and the Instagram universe. It is Friday. It is noon. This is Free Tarot Fridays with me, Rebecca Hart, the tarot philosopher on Instagram and cleartarotnyc.com um, elsewhere. Um, how are you guys doing? How is everybody in New York doing? Are we breathing easy? Are we protecting ourselves? What a strange experience the last couple of days has been. I was thinking about how, I don't know, just the irony of how a very short time ago we were all like, be very careful and don't gather indoors. And then suddenly like within, in a 24 hour period, it was like, be very careful and don't gather outdoors. You know, don't breathe outdoors, wear your mask outdoors. You can take it off on the subway. Like, um, this has no like special tarot significance. I think, although probably later in this broadcast, we'll find out what the significance is. Hi, Mike. Feeling better today. That is really good to hear. Um, anyway, this is a weekly live stream that I do called Free Tarot Fridays <clears throat> because uh, the first person is for people who haven't read tarot before, haven't read tarot with me before. I decided a while ago that um, the best way to communicate what I do is to not just keep telling you that I do tarot because that means so many different things to different people and to share the way I do it. Um, I'm very happy that since I started this, I have been able to meet some new people and some new clients and have um, new ongoing relationships and read lots of tarot. I love listening to you guys um, talk about your lives and looking at them through the lens of these beautiful cards. Um, so yeah, I usually, I do this, I get on here, I chat about something to do with the tarot, and then um, I will do a free speed reading for the first person to put a question in the chat. And sometimes nobody comes to put a question in the chat, even though I'm like, free tarot. <laughs> um, so uh, if you have tarot curious friends, maybe this would be a good way to dip your toes in it. I don't know. I am excited because I'm doing my first event in a long time. I'm going to read a bride, read at a bridal shower um, in Brooklyn in July. And I, I love, I just love reading for strangers, honestly. Like it's the purest way to do tarot, I think. And um, these celebrations that are crossroad points are very ripe for the, this kind of thing, divination, if you will. Um, and I will. I'm also going to be, I found out a featured speaker at StarCon, which is, I think, a mostly online national tarot and astrology conference. I don't know anything about astrology. I think of them as two different things um, in January. So that's a ways away. Um, looking forward to that because I like to talk about this stuff. So, okay, I'm just going to talk for a minute. And then I guess if nobody has any questions, I will move on. But you will let me know as usual. So I guess today what I'm thinking about, I've, I've been very pentacles focused in case you haven't been here before. There are four suits in, the, in a deck of tarot cards, the cups, the sword, the wands, and the pentacles. They, they stand for the four essential aspects of our lives, relationships, spiritual matters, um, mental matters, and action, and um, the material world. Um, it goes a lot deeper than that, but that's the way I like to introduce them to people. And I've been talking a lot about the pentacles, the material world, because a lot of quest financial questions and money stuff has been coming up for um, my clients and for me. Um, and today I woke up and I was like, cups, we're going to talk about cups. Um, the cup in the tarot is um, the heart, basically. And I like to say that, excuse me, I don't, I don't know, for some reason, my throat is really dry today. I wonder if something's going on with the air quality. Oh, man. So the cup, the suit of cups in the tarot is the suit of relationships and matters of the heart. And I like to say that that's because it's a very, um, you know, blunt, right in front of your face symbol. What do we do with a cup? We use it to nourish ourselves. We use it to get something we need to stay alive. We drink or we pour from it and we feed it to someone else. It's how we we give and how we receive, which is basically what we're talking about when we're talking about relationships. But I was thinking today about the fact that there are, um, you know, there are these classic cups cards that are like people having relationships, you know, three of cups. I love always makes me happy dancing, partying, joy, six of cups, a beautiful instance of um, purity of friendship, giving gifts, connecting on a beautiful level. Um, and then there are also cups cards that don't really seem to portray relationships as such. There's other stuff going on. Like, for example, the Seven of Cups, which is kind of these free floating cups with lots and lots of stuff coming out of them, or the Four of Cups, in which someone is very, 
definitely not engaging with the world or with anyone has an emotional or relationship opportunity and is just like, nope. Um, and I was thinking, I don't know, a couple of things. I think because I just had a conversation with a friend where I found out a, a, a plan that I made for tomorrow with this friend and some others that I was really looking forward to is not happening or this friend is not coming and my feelings are really hurt. This is not a tragedy um, or a big deal by any means, quote unquote, but it's a cups moment. It's like, you know, what's going on? My feelings are really hurt, you know? And part of the reason those feelings are hurt is because I had expectations and ideas alone in my house thinking about what this was going to be like. And I'm assuming that those expectations and ideas and stories that I told myself about tomorrow are true. And now I feel that those have been taken away from me. And that is what we call a fantasy or a storyline because I don't actually know the future. Another thing I really like to get across to my clients a lot that tarot is not about telling the future, but that's another topic. Um, so I had what you, and now I have other fantasies going on, right? About how like I have been rejected and what that means and what it means that he isn't coming. And it means that he doesn't care about me and all this stuff that we do. And like, there are situations where this kind of fantasizing and storytelling is, uh, the stakes are much higher, but it kind of always happens whenever something happens in terms of getting or, or receiving from another person um, where we attach a story to it. And there's like the pain of the like the ouch of the thing. I didn't get what I wanted. And then there's the second ouch that we add to it. And that means what, that I'm not as important to this person as I want to be that like, whatever it is. Um, and that is, that is this, right? That is the seven of cups wishing and hoping and thinking and praying fantasy storyline, 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 you know, and there's this person notice that the person is in the dark is almost, um, not the central focus of this card. The rest of it is just all of the stuff that's coming out. Um, and I started thinking about, well, the page of cups, the beginner in the realm of relationships with the heart is always pictured with a fish leaping out of the cup, you know? And I was like, so there's already something in there, right? Before we even come to another person, we have stuff we're carrying and that stuff can be offered and be nourishment or it can get in the way. And I was thinking about, um, uh, kind of what I'm going to call today the two ends of the cups spectrum, the two polarities, right? In the middle, we have a thing that we need to survive. Like relationships are not just for fun, right? We actually need each other. We need to re relate to other people in this world. Um, it, it's sort of unavoidable. We can't really like quit that. I mean, we can, but it, it doesn't go well. You know, even I think even if we try, we can't. So we've got this thing in the middle, this nourishment that we need. We need to, to connect with other humans. We need to give them things. We need to receive things, right? The cup as nourishment. And in the middle, I think we have getting what we need, doing what it's supposed to do. And on this end of the spectrum, maybe we have uh, getting nothing. So starvation, right? We'll call it that. And on the other end of the spectrum, we call, I'm going to call it drunkenness or gluttony. And there are maybe two cards for that. That's not what they mean. Don't like, let's not get really literal about this. You don't look up, we won't look up the four of cups in a dictionary and it'll say starvation. But um, for the purposes of this discussion, we've got these two ends of the spectrum. And I would call them the four of cups being um, emotional, uh, emotional starvation and relationship starvation and isolation, right? And I would call the nine of cups drunkenness, emotional drunkenness. And what does that mean? I think it doesn't mean like ha, emo, emotional drunkenness is, is drunkenness is too many cups, right? So emotional drunkenness is too many friends. Like that's not true. Um, but I would say that it, it's, um, you can almost feel it physically, right? When you're tilting too far forward into like expectation, um, what you need from them, beliefs about them that fly in the face of the reality of your experience with them. That's a big one for a lot of us. Like, I'm just going to keep believing that I can get this thing, even though it's never happened, you know? So not being in reality, I guess I would call emotional drunkenness, assigning meaning to things that happen. Um, I'm not going to get to go on this trip or whatever, or like, or this person broke this date or whatever. And that means, et cetera, et cetera. Um, we're not in reality. It's, it's too much. And I also think this happens when we're in isolation, I think um, that's ironically, the less time we spend with people, the more sort of fodder we have for making up stories about them. You know, like, again, I, I quote this all the time, but Mark Twain said, um, I have been through some terrible things in my life and some of them actually happened. You know, I'm like, I get that. I don't know if you do, 
but I really get that. Arguing with people who aren't there, um, assigning meaning to things that haven't yet happened, just being at home. like. And then if you have spent like too much time like maybe in quarantine by yourself, and then we try to be with friends again, I don't know if you had this experience, but sometimes it's awkward, but sometimes it's also like, oh my God, that whole thing I was thinking about doesn't even exist. You know, a la the big Lebowski, am I thinking about this case? It become very uptight. Yeah. So I guess that's what I want to say that I think we must always strive for emotional sobriety. You know, I guess that means like taking what you actually need, seeking what you actually need, asking the question, is what I am after going to solve the problem that I'm hoping it solve will solve? Um, or am I having a fantasy about it? Um, and remembering that on, conversely, relating to other humans and emotional connection is something we actually need and we can't solve the problems with relating to other people by just being like, well, I just won't do it. You know, that isn't going to really solve it either. Um, I had a therapist once who used to keep a, a little collection of hedgehogs, like toy doll or sculptured hedgehogs by um, on her desk. And her the thing was she, she loves that as a symbol because... Um, we need to get as close to each other as possible and we crave intimacy and closeness, but we also are covered in prickles and we can hurt each other without even meaning to, you know, all the time. And um, there's, I think one of our big fantasies is there will be a point where I will have relationships in which I never get my feelings hurt and that is not coming you know but we can all but we can manage our expectations and we can try to stay in reality and in emotional sobriety so that's just that's my cups lecture for the day um so if nobody has a question um that they want a tarot card reading about today um i will probably close this down soon fyi how old am i is not a question for the tarot cards because um it's not it's not the kind of question we bring to the tarot. I'm here to help you guys reflect on your lives. Um, so yeah, that's uh, not going to be one that I take on. Um, I'm trying to, there was another funny thing that was like about my hair once that I was like, <laughs> maybe I should explain what tarot cards are for. Um, but I also want to say that if you or anyone else um, has not read with me yet and is curious, you can find me at cleartarotnyc.com or on Instagram at the tarot philosopher. You can just message me here and set up a one-on-one -on -one reading um, or you know, any more bridal showers that are coming down the pike. I'm so thrilled to be your reader at your event. I'm really looking forward to this one in July. Um, and that's it. The last time I pressed stop, I felt so bad because as I pressed stop, someone was like, I have a question, you know, and then it was over. So come back um, and I'll talk to you next week.